It shows none of the artistry those original games had, but I don't really care about the VR title. It's Gungrave Gore that I'm interested in. If only I had kept that attitude. Curiosity got the better of me, my dear subscribers. I did something I really shouldn't have. I bought Gungrave VR. As you may remember from my Persona dancing video, I recently got a PlayStation VR, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's an incredibly cool device, but something I noticed is that there isn't a lot of regular video games to play with it. In fact, a lot of its library is glorified tech demos. There's this Danganronpa demo that's absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, it is just a tech demo. There's no full game to go along with this experience, which, if you ask me, is a bit of a cop-out. There are some full games though that I was quite happy with. Zone of the Enders is a lot of fun in VR, and so is Resident Evil 7. These are experiences where the VR aspect actually adds something to the game. You can play either of them perfectly fine without the headset of course, but the VR adds an extra layer. Sadly, there aren't too many of these types of games. Most developers keep treating the technology like an amusement park ride. A fun little experience you enjoy. It's quick, it's a spectacle, and it's over before you know it. Gungrave VR fits into the latter. Gungrave VR is actually two games. Gungrave VR and Gungrave VR UN. These are sold separately as digital titles, but if you buy the physical release like I did, you get both. Both are very short though, and combined, they're probably shorter than the original Gungrave. I'm going to be comparing this to the original Gungrave quite a lot in this video, because there's no reason why they should have less content than a game that's over 15 years old. And the original Gungrave was not a long game by any means, but at least it felt like an actual video game that someone put love and care into. The VR game doesn't. It feels like some kind of prototype you would develop as a proof of concept. You'll realise this as soon as you play the first mission. You'll walk forward through this alleyway and come to this wide open area. And this is as far as you go in this stage. That scenery over there in the back? You can't go there! When I first played this, I was so angry that this entire mission was confined to this one area. The original had a sense of progression. It was constantly moving forward. It felt like you were exploring this seedy city. There's not even any cohesion between these missions. Mission 2 just starts you on top of this train for some reason. Remember at the end of the first game when you got in that elevator and it took you to the final area? Remember how taking that elevator reminded Brandon of his past? There is none of that here. The story is so bare bones it's hardly even worth mentioning. It is actually a sequel to Overdose though, which kind of surprised me. I figured it would have been a remake, a reboot or something. But still, the plot is just an excuse here. It doesn't matter at all across the two games. You're amazing, Grave! <laughs> Why did you randomly say that? Okay, so the graphics. I already mentioned this in my Gungrave retrospective, but the graphics are really shitty. And I don't mean that in the way people usually mean it. Like when people disparage a new game when they say it looks like a PS2 game or something. I'm talking more about the art design and general aesthetic. It's ugly. Go back and look at those heavy shadows in the PS2 games. That's what it's meant to look like. This is what it actually looks like. Brightly lit and everything looks like plastic. Graves' in-game model is overly shiny. Almost like he's an action figure. All the Augmen look like toys too. It's just a mishmash of colours and nothing stands out as good. I have no idea what they were trying to convey with these visuals. Because they're just fucking garbage. But whatever, I said to myself. I can get past the bad graphics if the gameplay is at least fun. It's, uh, it, it, it's not. It's really not. Well, for the most part. Using the headset to aim your guns is pretty cool. It's something that really wouldn't have worked in the old games, so I'm glad they tried it here. 
Unfortunately, this is the only interesting thing it does. It's massively inferior to the controls in the old games. They were quick and responsive, especially in Overdose. And boy, does this game not have the pace of Overdose. There's a lot of moments where the controls aren't responsive. Right after dodging and cooling down your weapons are the main offenders. The weapon cooldown is probably the worst thing they could have put in a Gungrave game. After firing for a while, your guns overheat, and you have to find the right moment to cool them down. That might sound like it adds a bit of strategy to the gameplay, but it just brings the pacing to a halt. The Death Coffin melee attack seems to have regressed back to how it was in the first game. If you get hit after you press the button, but before he does the melee attack, the attack will be cancelled and you'll be staggered. That makes sense, doesn't it? What doesn't make sense is why Grave does the attack anyway when he gets back up. This is pretty common when you're trying to hit projectiles back at the enemy. The timing here has to be a bit more precise than how it was in Overdose. And while we're talking about getting staggered, did you know that your burst shot can be cancelled now as well? That makes it far less awesome than in any of the previous games, where it was treated like a get out of jail free card. Now it just sucks. I've been talking about the main gameplay, the part that actually resembles Gungrave by the way, but it almost feels like they didn't even want to make these sections, because very little of the game uses them. Out of the five stages present, only three of them contain traditional Gungrave gameplay. The second stage is just a glorified turret section where you can't move. The fourth stage is one where you're riding on a flying motorcycle or something. This is a bit better since you can move, but it's still not Gungrave. Only the first and third stages are full missions without any bullshit. The first one is incredibly short, and the third one has the worst boss in the entire game. It feels like everything is working against you here. The camera is too slow to turn, the hit detection is awful, and those unresponsive controls become a bigger problem than ever. Forget the Garino boss, this is infinitely worse. The final boss is pretty shitty, but it's alright. It forces you to make use of Reaper time, which is sort of a new mechanic. You can move in slow motion for a few seconds. Good mechanic, I have no issue with it. I do take issue with how it pretty much serves the same purpose as Burst Mode now. Burst Mode in the old games is when your character starts firing quicker and doing the cool gun kata. It had an actual purpose there because you could do more damage. Burst Mode kind of returns in this game, but it doesn't make you fire more bullets. It exists solely to look cool. Now it's Reaper time that allows you to fire more bullets. It's almost like they didn't understand those old games at all. Gungrave VR is complete janky shit. It doesn't even have an ending. It is a complete waste of your time, and a mockery of this cult series. But we're not done yet, because I also have to talk about its mini-sequel. Gungrave VR UN. This one is actually a lot better though. In fact, I'd go as far as saying this one is playable. It's not good or anything. It's just playable, and part of this might have something to do with my standards being dropped so low with the previous game. This one has the same issue with not sticking to the traditional Gungrave gameplay, but at least it replaces it with something better this time. Instead of boring, static turret sections, we have side-scrolling. Yeah. Ooh, who, who asked for this? So basically, you use a headset to aim and look to the left and right to see where the enemies are. You can even turn your head all the way around and look at how terrible these wall textures are. So this isn't terrible. It still has a lot of the same unresponsive controls from the previous game, but I actually found myself having fun here. I was enjoying how stupid some of these enemies look, and how they fly at the camera sometimes for no reason. There's even a short section where you have to dodge under lasers, it's gimmicky trash, and I love it. These three missions take place in a factory, and the visuals are incredibly repetitive and ugly. You'll find yourself in the same areas over and over again. 
If only they could take the location variety from the first VR game and apply it here. There's also some stupid shit with your dodge, where if you move your head to the other side of Grave as he's doing it, his dive will completely flip directions in midair and go in the other direction, and will probably send you into the enemy you was trying to dodge. Both games have a character select screen. When I first saw this menu, my immediate thought was, can I play as Juji and Rocket Billy? And no, no you can't. Mika makes it sound like there's other characters you can change to. She says something along the lines of, Oh hey Grave, uh, have a break and we'll take it from here. But there are no extra characters on this damn screen. This doesn't change your character at all, just your costume. The original and overdose costume. That's it. If you're going to do a costume select menu, there better be at least three of them. Because this is just embarrassing. There was so little effort put into this duology. There aren't even any VR settings. You can't have the camera turn smoothly or anything like that. They won't even let you look at Mika's ass. I mean, come on! An insult to the franchise. This gives me next to no hope for Gungrave Gore. Big guy. 